Goat farming. Goat milk has more calcium and healthy fat per gallon, giving you a more nutritious bang for your buck. Although goat milk is not as popular in the United States as cow milk, the rest of the world has been consuming it for hundreds of years. Even individuals with lactose intolerance may readily consume goat milk. This is because goat milk's protein structure differs from cow's milk. Goat milk also has a reduced cholesterol content. To know more about it, keep watching. Everyday care should be included when developing a dairy goat farming business strategy. Because wet grass and goats are rarely seen together, goats will demand a dry dwelling space. At the absolute least, a spacious run-in shed with dry bedding should be given. Fresh water, food, and grazing or hay or pasture are necessary every day. Goats are tough and easy to grow if properly cared for. Goats who become unwell frequently go downhill abruptly, so it is helpful to establish a conceptual baseline of how a usual healthy animal acts. There are four conditions for effective dairy goat housing. Number one, the building should be well aired with no condensation on the walls or ceiling. Number two, the sleeping place must be dry and clean. Number three, feeders and water systems must be well designed and strategically placed so that feed and water are not polluted by animal waste. Access to clean water is critical for milk production and herd health. Number four, accommodation should be designed to reduce the amount of effort and time necessary to keep the facility clean. To facilitate cleaning, the milking area should be isolated from the stable area and have a non-porous floor such as concrete. A vacuum pump is used in a milking pipeline to assist the transport of milk from the goat to the tank where it is kept. A farmhand connects a milking apparatus fashioned like a handheld microphone to each cow's teat. The milk flows from the goat through the pipeline through vacuum suction and gravity to a bulk chilling tank. Each pipe contains connections that allow a milking machine to be plugged in at various places, and they are frequently fixed permanently near the milking parlor ceilings. The goats are fixed with headlocks and are continuously fed on the other side. Once the goats leave the plant safely, they start the cleaning system. First, they wash off all surfaces in the milking parlor before disinfecting the pipes and milking apparatus. Then they pump hot water through the milking system again. In this manner, the inner system will remove any accumulated milk particles and the water will finally come out clean and transparent. A chemical cleaning solution is now absolutely essential to disinfect any chemicals in protein that haven't yet been removed from the dairy machinery. To clean the milking tubes, dairy firms employ a chlorinated alkaline detergent. To ensure sterilization, the water and detergent mixture must be between 70 and 75 degrees Celsius at the start. The outgoing water temperature may be measured using the return wash pipe. The third step is cleaning the milking system after completing the wash cycle. The most popular purifier dairy producers use is chlorine in conjunction with warm alkaline water. The dairy equipment must be allowed to drain entirely after a five-minute cycle per the manufacturer's recommendations. A pump drives raw milk through the porous surface of a fiber to filter it. Because the pressure on each side of the filter is varied, any particles smaller than the filter's pore size must pass through. Water, fat, protein, minerals, bacteria, somatic cells, and other minute components may be present in these particles. Larger particles such as flakes, straws, hair, insects, or clots cannot pass through and are prevented from entering the bulk tank. Milk filtration filters are mostly inline filters consisting of various types of fiber, paper, or cloth placed over a perforated metal frame inside a cylindrical tube. When using inline filters, the milk should be filtered before cooling. This enables more sediment to be eliminated while also protecting the cooling plates from harm in the future. Now, pasteurization is a straightforward procedure that begins with heating the milk to 63 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. The pasteurized milk is chilled to the temperature required by the bacteria. They add a special combination of microorganisms to each variety of cheese to give it flavor. Some of these bacteria are responsible for the acidic flavor of the cheese, some for the formation of gray or white mold, and others for each cheese's 
unique odor. For 40 minutes to an hour, they let the milk settle with the microorganisms. They let it sit for 24 hours in some cheeses. The next step is to add the rennet, which causes the milk to clot into the curd. This is the first step in converting milk into cheese. Coagulation varies from cheese to cheese and can take anywhere from 40 minutes to 24 hours. The molding procedure must be completed quickly enough to prevent the curd from losing its flexibility and texture. Next, they pour the curd into the selected shape and lay it aside for 24 hours to solidify. During this time, they can turn the curd, which has already begun to take on the shape of cheese. Throughout this procedure, the curd drains and loses way over the draining tables. The dairy is going through various phases of maturing. As soon as the fresh cheeses are packaged, they are ready to consume. For four to six weeks, the rind cheeses are held and matured in our climate-controlled walk-in cooler. The hard cheeses are transported to the underground maturing cellar, which is similar to a wine cellar. Even the temps are nearly the same. They've been there for at least four months. The longer the cheese matures, the nicer it becomes. They turn the cheeses over nearly every week throughout the maturing process to ensure that the bacteria that is developing within the cheeses grows evenly. And here is how dairy goat farming is done. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.